I feel like a bit of a dick wearing these headphones. I'm not going to lie. Why are you DJing? <laughs> dick jockeying? <laughs> <laughs> what I do in my private life is none of your concern. <laughs> I just, I don't suit over ear headphones. I think you're either an over over ear headphone wearer mm. or an in ear. Mm. You don't. You don't. I think you look pretty good. You don't cross those boundaries. I think you look all right. No, I just I need AirPods in my ears. We're not sponsored by Apple, but I need AirPods because they're small, low profile, low profile. What about AirPods Max? I mean, again, not sponsored, but <laughs> <laughs> like a, like the real big the over ears that, but they're AirPods. You know, I don't want to use your AirPods. Yeah, no, I don't. <laughs> I hated that joke. It was terrible. <laughs> it was so bad. Oh. That was worse than most of mine. <laughs> I thought I'd give it a crack. I felt <laughs> uncomfortable. The listeners felt uncomfortable. Yeah. And at the end of the day, we've learned our lesson, haven't we? Well, one thing I've learned, Sam, is that you and I, together, 78 Amped, we're new and noteworthy. Are we? Yeah. Wow. So so proclaimeth Apple. Okay. Again, no shouting out, no shouting out to Apple, but... <laughs> <laughs> this is a great plug so far. Today brought to you by Tim Cook. Who? Let Tim Cook. Um, <laughs> I walked into that. Sorry. <laughs> I did, I, anyway, that's not near the end of there. Welcome no. to anyone who's, who's picked up from from the, the front page of Apple. Yeah, I'm, we've lost them already. Yeah, so. quick quick in and quick out. Yeah, quick in, quick out. But welcome to the show, those who are joining us for the first time and our you know returning listeners. I don't know what you're here for, but we appreciate it nonetheless. It's nice. It's nice for you. It's nice for us. It's just nice to be here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and we've got something new, Max. You've set off the bat. You've said, oh, I've got so much something new. I haven't even planned out the rest of the show because it's all in this segment. It's all new. Uh, yeah, that's true. I I had the the pleasure, Sam, on Friday last week of going to the June Rats and Fiddler co-headline gig wow. at the Tivoli in here in the Valley. And uh, I'll tell you what, I haven't been to a show that, like that in a long time where there's just that much energy going mm. on. Um, it was... <sighs> What's the word? It like, I, don't I mean, know. it's your story. Neither of the, neither of those bands are known for their like virtuosic uh, music playing. You know what yes. I mean? Um, but just the raw, like, punky, really hit that P, didn't I? The raw punky, <laughs> that raw energy, punky. Uh, the, the 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 vibe on stage. I don't know how to describe it so much as that. Like the the people, the energy. Yeah, it was just the people were. They really wanted to see some real, like, crashy, thrashy. Bashy. Bashy. Bombashy. Yeah, bombashy. Punky rock. It was awesome. Fiddler. Um, so the, they had the, uh, the Pingers and Darts do the opening. Yep. Then Fiddler came on. Um, Zach Harper, Short King Summer, go off, dude. Love it. Vibe. Huge man. Huge energy. That's not a problem that you experience, is it? Short no. King energy? No. And... But I tell you what, they they brought the fucking house down. Like they were just running through like hit after hit. Um, you know, they'd get something to like crack one open with the boys by yourself. They'd get one. <laughs> they they they'd go into like forty ounce on repeat, and the crowd like they just they they didn't need to sing. The crowd was just like taking over. It was fucking awesome. Oh, that was songs. I thought you said crack one open with the boys by yourself. <laughs> I mean, that is a song. Uh, and and like things like that. And then they would like just a bit of banter with the crowd between sets. Um, they covered Damn It by Blink-182. Yeah. Um, it was fucking, it was just raucous. And then Doonies came on stage and, I mean, hometown gig for Doonies. And you could tell that everybody was fucking, like, ready to roll. Like, they came out, it was the loudest shit I have heard so, like, in such a long time. Mm. And the, uh, like, there was a couple of songs where uh, Fiddler would come back out and, like, sing with the Doonies. Um, there was a couple of times when, oh, so, oh, um, Shane from DZ was their spare guitarist. Oh, nice. It was fucking sick. Uh, Brett just going ham, running around, like blowing shit up. It was fucking wild to see. It just, and just, th- there was a, a, a few circle pits, uh, Fiddler shouted out for a, a female only pit, which was nice. pretty funny. Cause they were like, it was like girls only get to the front, get in the pit. Uh, the rules are be nice to each other, pick each other if you fall down, and if there's a dude in the pit, just be- beat him up. <laughs> and it was fucking loose. It was fucking wild. A few walls of death. Um, just good old fashioned, like high energy, Aussie punk, Aussie well, slash no, Californian so. punk. And yeah. it was just yeah, really fucking sick. Really highly recommend. Well, that sounds a lot more fun than my weekend, Max. 
Is that your something new or you've got more for me? I do have more, but you go. But I don't want to take over too much time. Well, I'm falling into the old rhythm of growing up and just listening to the songs I like and not... Oh, no. I know. It's bad. We have to, do we have to shut the podcast down? Shut the podcast down. New music? Fuck it off. No, I've been falling into my old ways a bit this week. I've been getting really into Throne again. Mm. And, you know, I went through their album in 20 minutes because no song goes for longer than two minutes. <laughs> um, I'm not joking, though. It's a 10, 10 song album and it goes for like 23 minutes. Shit. Yeah, I know. What a waste of money for a vinyl. Um, apart from that, I've been listening to a lot of Ethel Kane and I I don't know what's going on. Yeah? You s- sad? No, I don't get it. But anyway, um, apart from that, after our chat with Lupo the Boy, I got really into Technologic again. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and listen to Sam. Absolutely. Mr. Boy. Try one on with Mr. Boy. He was having none of it. <laughs> he looked at me as if I was a dick. <laughs> Well, we'd, we'd, earlier in the in the interview, we'd said, "Imagine going to a a professional DJ and and giving requests, and then essentially Sam goes, here's a request, play the fucking song properly. If you're gonna mix it, at least play the fucking drop, <laughs> you dingus." Anyway. <laughs> um, apart from that, I've been getting really back into Joji as well. I feel like I'm going through something subconsciously, and I don't know what it is. Yeah, it sounds like you yeah. might be having some issues, Sam. I don't know, maybe. Is everything and, all right? Yeah, could. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> um, and apart from that, we by the time this airs, mm. uh, this is a Wednesday show, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but technically Wednesday morning. Yeah, nice. Well, tonight we're off to the 20th anniversary Parkway Drive show. Yes, we are. Uh, our, our new friends at uh, Epitaph Records are sending us, which is very exciting. Very exciting. I like new friends. I don't have many, so I like new ones. He's a social boy. I'm a social boy. But as a result, I've been getting into killing with a smile. Yeah. Oh, my God. Belters. <laughs> there are some belters. <laughs> you emphasize the P, I'll emphasize the B. <laughs> Between us, Parkway Drive are going to be great. Parkway Drive and their belters. <laughs> um, but songs like Anasasis, Romance is Dead, like Smoke Them If You Got Them. I just hope they pull some out tonight. Your first Parkway show. Oh, little virgin. Wee little maxi boy. Wee little maxi. And I'm very excited for uh, Void Division. I think they're going to blow people's pants off. Yep. Not literally. F- not literally, just no, figuratively. Just in a musical me- metaphor. Yeah, it's a musical metaphor. Yeah, so, no, um, I like that. That's, you know, shout out Void Division, blowing people's pants off. Uh, what's been blowing my pants off this week as well, Sam, <laughs> is uh, the debut record record from The Dare. Yes. Um. You know, a lot of listeners will know The Dare from his collaborations with uh, Charlie XEX on Brat and also from the song Girls, which is everywhere on TikTok at the moment. Yeah. Um, and his debut album, What's Wrong With New York, is fucking awesome. It, it feels like it's been designed in a lab to hit every dopamine receptor in my brain. Okay. Like it's just everything about this album is like it's just the Max Higgins story. Can I just say? Yeah, man. The de- <laughs> You sure can. I'll Thanks. give you permission. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the dare reminds me so much. Just his sound, short skirt, long jacket by Cake. Yep, there's. I think there's something in that. Yep. I, if for people that don't know the dare's music, it is part like LCD sound system, part Calvin Harris, a little bit of Cake, I suppose, with like the the flatness in the vocal delivery. Yeah, and not flatness in like in a musical sense, but flatness in like a. Like it's it's dry. It is dry. Yeah, There's it's not punky. A lot of, yeah, yeah, yeah. To to kind of explain that musically, it's very like rough around the edges to the point that it's like deliberately rough around the edges. Like yep. some of the synths are deliberately distorting from being too loud or too bassy. Um, the guitars are deliberately like slightly out of tune to everything else. The vocal is deliberately flat, like and and dry, and it's got that real like. It's leaning on, but it's very dancey and fun and like the drum beats drive it forward. The synths are like jagged and sawtoothy and they just sort of like sawtooth. stick out. It's very sick. Um, there's a microphone there. <laughs> Sorry. And so there are times when the lyrics get a little bit too postmodern and a little bit too like irony and like self-referential and that, yep. that can be a bit annoying. It can almost feel like a bit weird like parody, but musically like that back half of the album is unbeatable. It's so good. Belter, belter. Yeah, I 
cannot recommend this album enough at the moment. It's taking over my music. Well, your note says... Fucking belters. Yep. Which yep. was, that was very cake delivery. It was. <laughs> I want a girl <laughs> with a short skirt and a long. <laughs> belters. Oh. <laughs> Jacket. Nice. Thank you. I'm, um, here, I'm here all day. It's, yeah, fucking incredible. Enough with the expletives, young. Man. Sorry, it's very incredible, and I'm <laughs> just super. running. Out, I'm running out of words to describe it. It's freaking incredible. Trying to find the words to describe this girl without being disrespectful. <laughs> this album, she's a sexy bitch. She's a sexy minx. Um, and a couple other other songs that have been that I've had because I don't like to put songs on back to back, so I've had to have a couple of songs that I can put them between <laughs> oh. things. And you also don't rewind parts. So no, I don't. We've had this, back to the start. I'm going to pivot this. Yeah. So. Like the headphones, there's two types of people. Mm. There's people that hear a sick part of a song and will rewind to that part and just replay that. Or there's people like you, and I think it's monstrous that you do this. Monstrous. You go back to the start of the song to hear a moment that's two minutes in. Yeah, you need the build. You need to earn it. Two minutes of build. Yeah, you need to earn it so that when it gets there, you're having the emotional, like the what it's designed to get out of you. Otherwise, if you just go to that bit, it's... It's like, it's like, it's like an ad coming up for a show or a YouTube video that you really want to watch. No, 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 it's not. It's, <laughs> it's like, like, you don't understand. It's like, <laughs> it's like, it's the difference between watching a game of football or watching the highlights. Like the highlights are great and you go, great, that was a great goal, but you don't have the emotional investment because you haven't watched the game to get there. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of which. <laughs> Speaking of which. This is a pivot in a pivot. No, this is to your point. So... Say someone scores a try, kicks a goal. Yeah. And you love that. Yeah. Fuck the replay. Let's just restart the game. Yeah, no, but it, <laughs> but it's like the, like you're never going to get that emotional stake in it without the build. No, but say you just want to, you know, that's your favorite goal ever kicked. Yeah. You're going to go, you're like, oh, round 18. Uh, we'll go back to the first quarter. It was in the fourth quarter, but you've got to watch the first quarter. Well, I mean, to yeah, understand. To be fair, I, I, I still stand by it because, in the sense of like, you can watch the goal and be like, that was a great goal and I really enjoyed that goal. But you don't have the like, what? Remember how fucking tight this game was and they yeah. were down here and then like this happened? You know what I mean? You don't get the build. You don't get the, you got to invest in it. Well, I want people to let us know. Drop it in the comments. Yeah, please. Are Which you, person are you? Are yeah. you the start the song again person or mm. are you the continuous rewind to that part. Yeah. Because I feel like, I don't know, maybe it's just our individual musical autism. It's <laughs> it's it's eating the good part. It's eating your potato mash without having your veggies. You know what I mean? You've got to have your veggies so it's a rounded meal. <laughs> what? Where's that coming? I don't know. <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> but uh, the couple of other songs that I have been yeah, throwing sorry. in there as well Um Actually, I'm going to bring them up so oh, we can have a little listen. It's not even prepped. I'm not even prepped. Uh, Did you have to swallow into the mic like that? Uh, oh, yuck. I'm so sorry to anyone listening. That's disgusting. This one is uh, Control by Nick Ward. Yeah, Bob. He's opening for Troy Sivan. He's opening for Troy Sivan. I want to bring it forward so you can hear the ending of this as it just goes a bit wild. Oh, so you skip it now? Yeah. Don't play the whole song. Don't wink at me. I don't want you to emotionally invest in this, Sam. This is for me and me alone. Uh, and then the other one that I've got is uh, Blockbuster, who were a, uh, a, a video rental yes, company. Yes, very much so. They yeah. were a band that we didn't, we should have really caught up with at, uh, at no, not Splendor, Big Sound. <laughs> but we didn't. We missed them. Under the radar for me. Yeah, um, nice. And then their song "Chow" uh, mm. is is I don't know. It's just it's got that kind of tame impala, yeah, floatiness to it. Yep. And um, I don't know. It's 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 got something in there that I've been really vibing with. I like it. Well, I'm gonna play you one. Back to twenty years of Parkway Drive, and I'm gonna play one for the listeners. Sure. So. This is what you're in for tonight. Yep. They probably won't play this, but this song, you know how way back in the day bands would introduce um, or they'd introduce parts of movies into their songs? 
Uh, They'd of. play like movie quotes in their songs, make it a bit more dramatic and atmospheric. Sure. So I'm going to play you this. We're going to we might see this tonight, but 2005 this came out, and even though there's a movie quote in it, it is it's oh, brace yourself. The deepest circle of hell is reserved for betrayers and mutineers. Brisbane, what the fuck is up? <laughs> Let's open this shit up. Let's go, boys. I loved that quote from Cars too. I did too. Johnny Depp really sold it, didn't he? <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, Parkway Drive. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Metalcore. Oh, wow. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> they definitely won't play that song, but I just wanted to play you a bit of Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp meets metal. What is the name of the song? Mutiny. Mutiny. That's mm. what he said. Mm. The deepest circle of, of hell. He also said the deepest circle of hell. And that's not it's reserved for betrayers and mutineers. Yeah. Well, he didn't say mutiny. mutiny did he? I don't know. I didn't watch Pirates of the Caribbean much. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, speaking of live music, Sam, that yes. we may or may not be seeing. What a segue. Thank you. I've really worked on it. Um, it's like we wrote the show beforehand. It's <laughs> scripted, every word of this. Imagine, <laughs> even imagine even we these... scripted this shit. <laughs> I'm sitting there being like, yeah, well, yeah, what's the name of the song, Sam? A mutiny? <laughs> I'm just going to leave that to die <laughs> where, it, where it belongs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sorry. Two, was, two global acts, Sam. Yes. Are coming to Australia. Tiny Tim. But how many are coming to Brisbane, Sam? Fucking zero. Fucking zero. Zilch. Nada, well, Nicks. technically, it's um, one of them's coming near Brisbane. Near it. Yeah. Nearby. Yeah. So that's uh, that'll be Californian rock superstars, Green Day. Uh, that is Green Day. The fact that the Californians are relevant at this. When they get so big, no one gives a shit where they come from. Well, they do. Do they? Yeah. Um, that's good for them then. <laughs> they, they have announced three dates in Australia uh, next year and Mar- March next year and they are going to Marvel Stadium in Melbourne, NG Stadium in Sydney. So weird to go to NG Stadium. Like the GWS Giants Stadium. Yeah. Right. And Seabus Super Stadium in, in the Gold Coast. They just fucking love niche sports. AFL, NRL, sporting ground. They love a round ball, uh, round around football oval. Sorry, Titans, Western Bulldogs, GWS Giants. Yeah, wait, is Seabus? Oh no, Carrara is the the Suns, isn't it? Yeah, Seabus the Titans. Yeah, um, yeah. Mm. And then Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa has has also come out, and she's not Dua no show in Brisbane. She's only going to Sydney and Melbourne uh, at the at Rod Laver and Kudos Bank. So, what is it with artists internationally tour, tour, internationally, international? Fuck. Oh Christ! <laughs> internationally touring artists got there, skipping any city that's not Sydney or Melbourne. I don't get it. I mean, we we've had on the show before about how the artists are just not like. It's it's so much more economical for them that they're just like fuck it. They I just find it rude. It's but it's all to me it's so uh like at least Green Day are doing a Queensland show. But it's the Gold Coast. But like I look, if you're the if you're the band and you want to get some get some time at the beach, you know, <laughs> lay back, whatever. Have a skate and a surf. Yeah, you know, pop down to Pacific Fair. Pack Fair. <laughs> yeah. Coach you know? Kings. Oh. Go to the Ripley's, believe it or not. TNs. Yeah. Sorry, mm. I'm wearing TNs for those mm. listening. The at least they're coming to yeah, they're to, coming up to Brisbane. How would you feel being in Perth? Yeah, get fucked, Perth. I can tell you that much. Adelaide. Yeah. Dar- When's the last time there was a show in Darwin? There, there hasn't. I don't think they've ever had a concert ever. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think it's just again, Brizzy now leading, being forced into leading the charge for all the other cities in Australia yeah. who are being who are being cut out. Jump on our back, guys. We've got you. Yeah. Because this is. You know what? Nothing we, short of we had a taste of the other side. You know, we we knew what it was like, and now yeah. we've been relegated. And frankly, we don't like it. And I tell you what, we don't like Sydney or Melbourne either. No, they're full of I shouldn't silly say, gooses. No, because a lot of Sydney and Melbourne people listen to our show. So true. thank you for that. Thank you for listening. But you're all tosses. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So please stop. 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 Don't. Don't turn off. Stop. 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 I was kidding. <laughs> Chalk those two up as losses for the the River City. Yeah, well, the Brown Snake. <laughs> anyway, yeah, time for the suitcase. Mm-hmm. 
We need a sound effect for that. Hang on, I've got one here. That doesn't work. Fuck. <laughs> this one. Well, you may have missed. We had to cut about 10 minutes of air while we were talking technical um, because I tried to use a bunch of sound effects that Max didn't program into our new little podcast toy. So that's mm. fun. So for now, zip. <laughs> He's, you're face palming. Yep. <laughs> Very observant. Why are you crying, baby? <laughs> hey, baby. Hey, baby. Don't blush. <laughs> that was so gross. Speaking of, did you see the Freddie Fitler one? No. Oh, my God. With the Fox sisters. Oh, no. On a kiss cam. Oh, oh no. it was so bad. Oh, I'm not into this. No, it was bad. Oh. He was on camera between Jess Fox and Naomi Fox. Mm. Gold medal Olympians. Yeah. Legends. Aussie icons. Mm. And the kiss cam must have been on at the NRL. And he goes, oh, kiss cam. Hope it. Hope it. Comes to me. Oh. Hey, girls. Oh, it was fucked. Oh. It was so bad. Stick to the footy, Fred. Yeah, just um, stick to your day job, which, fuck, I don't know what he does. <laughs> well, he certainly doesn't coach fucking New South Wales. <laughs> anyway, it was a painful watch. Yeah. And if you like that, don't be a dick. Yeah, no. Just for the record. Stand again. So no from us. Fuck off, Fred. Hands to yourself, Fred. Yeah, and comments to yourself. If you can't say something nice or not creepy, mm. don't say a word. But anyway, that was just, you know. Freddie won't be on this show. Two cents of free advice. Yeah, well, he, no one asked for it. Suitcase. I had to clap really quietly. The fuck? <laughs> that was the, a strange. The listeners, Sam's like, looked like a, a shyster leprechaun. Ole. Anyway. Ole. Anyway, that fuck. Back on track. Suitcase. Bands people are sleeping on. Mm. So bands that either don't get enough credit, bands that deserve to be more successful than they are, or bands that just got a shit end of the stick and had to pull up stumps when they could have been the next big thing. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like there's so many bands, and from a music discovery point of view, it's impossible to get you know, all the fingers in the pie Oh, don't give me that look. No, I'm just you, you. I'm just letting you take it up. Take it where you want to take it. You've got fingers in different pies. That's yep. a saying. That's yeah. No, that's fair. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Um, I just feel like it's so hard to find so many new artists, given the multitude of musicians out there. Yeah. So, this is just a bit of a one-stop shop. Bands or artists that you should look into that you know could be, should be the next big thing. Mm-hmm. So. A handball to you. Oh, it's straight to me to start <laughs> us off. Oh, that's fine. I was. We'll I'm, just go one for one. You don't have any, do you? No, I've got, I've got tres. Tres. Mm. Um, Spanish for three. Yes. Well done. Bilingual. He's good like that. Uh, I'm going to go local first. Dopamine, Brisbane band. Yep. Uh, they I sound like. Sound like. Sound like uh, like indie. indie Punk rock, but with with a good like a healthy dose of like oo oo's and ah ah's and a bit of harmonies and stuff like that. Mm, bit of case case chissy, <laughs> <laughs> bit of case ara. Uh, yeah, Fuck. it's it's like I don't know why that they're in that same realm of bands that um like you know we, we talked to Bean Magazine the other day. Yeah, very similar music kind of styling, and uh, I don't know. I just feel like they they're not getting the love that uh, they deserve. They they've dropped a few absolute belters. I think an EP and and some other bits and pieces. And I I just feel like they're fully slept on. If you, especially if you're from Brisbane, definitely check out yep. Dopamine. Go check out their show. Excellent, excellent stuff. Okay, mine is a little bit of a different tangent. I'm going Omar Apollo. Okay, obviously he's quite well known. One of the biggest artists currently. Well, in I, the charts. Is he in the charts? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'll skip that. No, I reckon. No, let's stick to it. Honestly, I want to hear what he's got to say. Well, I feel like he's not a household. <laughs> I'm going over an underground artist here. Sabrina Carpenter, you may have heard of it. <laughs> Taylor Swift, <laughs> you familiar? No, bands people are sleeping on and mm. artists. So Omar Apollo for me, whilst <laughs> huge, I feel like he's not a household name. He's not up there with your Ed Sheeran's, your bloody weekends, your your bloody hoo-hahs and woes, you know, your, your bloody woo The rest of Kiss, Jay- Kiss Chasey. Yeah. But I, his new album, God Said No, is unbelievably good. Right. From front to back, like unskippable. And I just feel like he should be one of the biggest names in music right now. Okay. And while he is popular... Sorry, I cracked my thumb. 
he should be massive. I'm talking like should be selling out stadiums. I mean, I look, I don't want to jump the gun. I'm I'm just doing some quick googling while you're Yeah, talking. you can tell me and then just I'm going to gonna go back and just to find the 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 um so his his uh God said no album uh was the 11th biggest album in Australia. <laughs> it was the 56th, 56th largest album in America at the time. Uh well, yeah, in in June this year. June. He uh, he's had I'm trying to find out if there's any singles that are He wouldn't here. have had a number 1. Um, he's had he peaked at number fifty one on the Billboard yep. chart. He managed thirty three on the Australian top forty. Yeah, so not quite there. Mm. He should be top twenty. He's on I'm the saying. charts, though. You know, he's on the charts. But I'm just saying, yep. I've gone from a I've gone for a different tact, and you might say, "What the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> but you can see my angle. I just think people should get a little bit more into. You want him to be even bigger. Even bigger. Yeah. Money and success, more. More. Anyway. Fair enough. He, he was also nominated for the Best New Artist Grammy. <laughs> so that's, you know, whatever. Like, well, I'm going to scrap that and I'm going to come in with a few under underrated. Yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. He's got he's got Pedro Pascal featuring on his album. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Daniel Caesar. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, mm. just a, just a young whippersnapper starting out in music. I never said they had to be a young whippersnapper. No, that's fair enough. I just said. Yeah, that's fair. They could be more deserving as well, you know. Mm, that's fair. I can't argue with that. No, that's right. I've come across my own, my own segments. Lovely. <laughs> I like that shit. Uh, I want to shout out um, Adelaide singer songwriter Alexia. Um, mm. I'm gonna spell that out for everyone because it's not how you might expect it. A L E A. Well, fuck that. Whoa. A L E K S I A H. And yeah, that's a mind fuck. Mm. And I don't know. Again, like it's it's very like. Um, like that real singer songwriter personal storytelling um, aspect of the lyrics, but it, like with the fun and the cheek that comes along with that, like it's a little bit tongue in cheek, a little bit silly, even though it's handling some pretty personal and like deep yep. um, subject matter. But again, just like master of melody, like that. It's so catchy that the songs will all get stuck in your head and you'll just be humming them for ages and ages and ages. I think she's uh, having a blow up. Yep. Um, currently, like I think, if, we, if if someone's listening to this in the future, they'll be like, mm, actually, election's quite quite big. Yeah, I think like we might be getting at the, at the at a good time to to ride the elevator up with with what this are we talking about Omar Apollo big mate Pedro Pascal the new Alexio album absolutely going off jolt. Look, I'm sorry, okay, I, I can't wait for your number two. This is gonna be fucking mind blowing. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Have you ever heard of uh, four little guys named Metallica? <laughs> <laughs> They're young and up and coming. Uh, one four. No. no, my next one is I just had it and now I've lost it. Wind Waker. Okay. I talk about Wind Waker all the time, but seriously, seriously good. They mix metal with like trap music with oh, rap. It's a bit new metal meets trap beats but incredible vocalists they're so good live they dropped an album called hyper violence a little while ago i i've raved on about it on and on but still not quite enough credit as deserved for me uh they they have not peaked on the uh australian aria charts i know um but they did get number 19 on the australian independent records chart oh <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry that's a 19 I'm, number three i'm sorry i'm not as niche as you <laughs> this guy um is my friend from high school he is just running beats on his <laughs> garage man at the moment but he's <laughs> super underrated um you know he goes by the name will uh rogers uh that's his maiden maiden name <laughs> i mean that's, that's his birth name mm. um he hasn't even thought of a stage name yet that's how underground he is won't rogers yeah yeah yeah, Put that one for free. No, you can keep that one. You can. <laughs> anyway, come on, hit me with your third. Given mine have been shit third and so final. Yeah. Uh, the band is Rest for the Wicked. Yep, they are made up of Tusker and um, uh, Ben Townsend. Ben Townsend, people would know as Ivan Ooze, and uh, okay. who is a producer out of Melbourne. Yep, they've come together, and it's kind of uh, a bit. Like a genre mashy, push, putting together a whole heap of different stuff. It's a bit 
it's a bit indie pop. It's a bit like there's some electronic elements to it. There's some production elements to it. It's also just a good like sing along, lots of good harmonies. Yep. Um, yeah, really slept on because I feel like like it's it's a sound that is familiar to us, but also like a little bit experimental. Okay. And I think enough that it's pushing it's pushing things forward. I think it's a if you're sleeping on them, don't. Wake up, Jeff. <laughs> Everybody's wiggling. Okay. Uh, my last one. Mm. If you're a fan of Lizzie McAlpine the way I am, uh, Charlie Adams. Oh. Yeah. So she's been around a little while. She's out of the US. I don't know specifically. Max is going to see if she's ever charted. It's Google. It's such a... Former wank. Scottish footballer. It's a wank thing to do you're doing there. Um, and then I'm going to come back because I've got a third one that I'm going to talk about that's not Omar Apollo. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Charlie Adams, she just dropped a new single called Airlifter. She's a bit like emo, sad, pop, acoustic vibe. But if you like Lizzie McAlpine, if you like Rose, if you like Delaney Bailey, all that stuff, Charlie Adams. Okay. I'm yet to find any chart data. <clears throat> Good. Um, that's not to say I won't do it. Uh, yeah, but in the meantime, I'm going to go back, scratch Omar Apollo and I'm going to go... Poor Omar. No, I'm not going to scratch him physically. Um, oh, fuck. I had it and I've lost it. We're going to scrap this part anyway. <laughs> fuck. Just how we got here. For listen- I've cut a lot of this out. For listeners that haven't really uh, listened to this part because it's been cut out, Sam just spent probably a good five minutes just being like, oh, I can't find the band I was thinking <laughs> of. <laughs> oh, gee whiz. Jets crackers. I can't find them. <laughs> oh, um, all right. Just fun, tri- fun trivia. Just yeah, to wrap hit- up because we can't end on this. No, you're hitting me with some trivia. Yep. Uh, at so 24 weeks is the longest that any individual song has been at number one in the RA chart. Yeah, which was going- Dance Monkey. Tones and I. Yuck. What do you think number two is? Back in black. At 17 weeks. Uh, Mr. Brightside, The Killers. No, that's my guess. Kid Leroy, Justin Bieber, Stay. Oh, I need you to stay. Mm. I like it. Um, well, look, as usual, we've started strong and finished shit out. So I'm going to take us out to a song that I've been loving. You know I'm a fan of the Tarzan soundtrack. Oh, God, yeah. Oh, don't, oh, God, me. It's just not as good as the Lion King soundtrack. Oh, I'm not having this fight with you again. But, you know, pop punk kid from way back. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Mum and dad don't understand, even though I go to a nice school <laughs> in a pretty safe city. <laughs> <laughs> How could they understand you? They never could. So a whole new sound came out. Oh, the Disney one. The Disney meets this pop punk goes Disney. We'll have to listen to this next week. Like the whole thing next week. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think we're gonna have to go through the whole thing Bit next of week. Yeah. But I'm gonna take you out and our listeners at home, I'm gonna take you out to friend of the show, Boys Like Girls, You'll Be in My Heart, famously by Philip and his column. In my heart. Oh, we, we could have left the guys to sing it. 